We're going to use the Fancy Flower Digital Stamp Set from Lindsay Stamp Stuff. And what I did was I printed them on a plain piece of copy paper. And I flipped the image before I printed them. Not that it really matters when you're dealing with flowers. And then I took them down to my library and I had a photocopy made because I need a toner based copy for this project. Then I took my photocopy and I cut apart all of my lovely flowers. You can really pack them into the on the page because you're going to cut around them. And now I'm going to show you how we get this onto our tile. Now I'm using just regular inexpensive 10 cent tiles from your home improvement store. The first thing you want to do is take some rubbing alcohol. I'm using just plain old isopropyl 70% alcohol from the drugstore or the grocery store, wherever you get it, and you want to wipe off your tile and that's going to remove any oils from your fingers or um, any other dirt or dust that's on your tile. These are just plain white glossy tiles. You could use matte tiles, um, any tile you have really. Just uh, give it a try. You could even transfer this onto other items as well, such as plastic or glass or metal, but I'm just going to use a white tile for today because I'm telling you, I had like a thousand of these things left over from my bathroom remodel a few years ago, so anytime I can find a way to use a tile, I go for it. You want to place your photocopy face down, and you can either use xylene that comes in a bottle from the um, hardware store, very stinky stuff. You can use it like this, or you can get a xylene-based marker. And this chart pack ad marker, uh, the clear blender, has straight xylene in it, so this will work as well. In fact, when this dries up, I'll just refill it from my um, big can of xylene and keep using it this way. If you don't have this marker, you can take the xylene, put it on a cotton ball, and um, just saturate your paper. The nice thing about the marker is it actually presses the paper down onto your tile and just helps um, helps it transfer a little bit better. As you color over it, you can see the design show through when your paper becomes transparent. I'll also warn you that line art works really good for this. If there's too much black on your photocopy, you might end up getting a smear. So just be mindful of that. I'm trying not to shift my paper as I go. It's pretty easy though because I left enough space around it. It's good and saturated. The nice thing about being able to see through the paper when it's wet is that you can see where you've gotten the juice. Okay, this stuff is very stinky. You want to make sure you have a window open or a fan on or you're going to get a headache. This is not a good project for people that are very sensitive to smells or have um, allergies or any sort of sensitivities, breathing problems, probably not good um, because this is, you know, they're toxic fumes. And here, I've got two bottles open here. That's just wonderful. All right, how many chemicals can we use on this project, I wonder? Now I'm going to take a little peek under there and see how my design is transferred. I'm going to leave it on another second and go over some parts. Before you pull the whole thing off, you just want to peek underneath and make sure you've got a good, good transfer. You can color down kind of firmly, and that will really press that paper on. Ooh, I think it might be smearing a little bit, so i got to be careful. It's kind of, you can press with your fingers a little bit, too, if you feel like it's not really making a uh, good bond. And um, if you're worried about, you know, Having these chemicals leach through your skin, you could always wear rubber gloves. I uh, have a devil may care attitude, I guess, towards toxic substances in my craft room. There we go. We have the pattern transferred on. Now you can go around with a marker and fill in the um, some of the lines later if you want to, but I think this is just fine as is. We're going to let this dry and then we're going to start coloring. All right, now it's time to color. My tile is dry. While um, that was drying, I took a chance, took the time to cut out my um, my picture that I transferred because I'm going to use this for a mask later. So that's setting aside, waiting for us in a few minutes. I'm going to use Pro Markers. Now, the reason I'm using alcohol-based ink markers is because I use xylene-based ink to transfer my photocopy. So my alcohol ink markers won't smear my color that I have down here. So as long as you use markers with different solvents, uh, you won't have any smearing. I'm going to start with um, actually my darker pro marker green, which is olive green from the um, Vivid Pro Marker Blending Set. 
Some people have emailed me and said they've had a hard time finding these sets. Um, they should be arriving anytime in stores, but if your local store doesn't have them, ask them to carry them for you, because I'm sure they could get them. Um, you can get some really cool techniques, really cool looks on the tiles with these markers. You can get like a polished stone look just by dabbing your um, lighter color marker on top of a darker color marker. And uh, really, this is just a really fun um, experimental project for you to try. I think I'm going to put in some more darks in there and just see what my markers do. Working wet into wet, it just gives you a really cool texture. Wouldn't that be nice for dragon scales or something? And your markers will stay wetter on this longer than they will on, say, paper because you've got this glossy surface and they can't absorb, so they're just kind of waiting to evaporate waiting for the solvent to evaporate to dry them. I think these would just be so cute for a housewarming present or a Mother's Day present because it's something that's totally useful and totally unique and who wouldn't love that? Boy, I really, I think I like this polished stone technique better than um, better than the kind of the alcohol inks on the glossy paper. This just looks fantastic. I hope it's showing up on the camera. Um, if you have a laser printer, which I don't, that's why I hike it down to the library to have my stuff photocopied, you can use a laser printout for this too. You basically just need like a, a toner, a toner-based copy. So that's why it wouldn't work with just my plain old inkjet copy. I had to have a photocopy, which is toner-based, to do it. You'll notice your colors are a lot lighter on um, the tile than they would be on paper because the colors can absorb. They're just kind of sitting on top. Um, and you can't really stick too much down there. I'm going to do the poppy red, reddish pink. I'm going to start with my crimson red, which is from the Vivid set. It's your lighter red in the Vivid set. And since this isn't going to dry up on me, I'm just going to go ahead and throw all my shadows in there. You can be very sloppy with this, which is... I love that. I love it when I don't have to worry about making a mistake. If you do make a mistake, you can take a Q-tip with a little bit of rubbing alcohol on it, or even your blender, your clear blender, and lift up the mistake. And it won't lift up the toner underneath because, as I remind you, it is xylene-based. Xylene is a solvent for that and not alcohol, so you'll just be fine and dandy. I'm throwing in a medium color. You don't want to work over all your dark like you would if you were working on paper because you'll lift it right up and whisk it away. You want to actually have a little bit of um, contrast there. So um, I might overlap it just at the edge where they meet, but I'm not going to color over all my darks, or we'll just end up with one color here. And that's not what we want. Go into my lighter color. And I will give you another tip. Sometimes you, if you use a lighter color over a darker one like this, you're going to pick up some of the other colors that you've colored over. Now, since they're all in the pinky-red family, it's not a big deal, but your pink might be a little darker next time you go to use it. So, after you're all done coloring, you will want to just scribble it out on some white paper, and that will clear it. That's a good idea after you use your blender, too. I'm just going to give it some dots, because I really love that look. So, you just kind of scribble it out here, and that will take any of the darker ink off of your marker. And I'm going to do some yellow from the Vivid Set. This is Sunflower color in that center, and then I'm going to take some of the lighter green, which is uh, pear green. I'm just going to dot in some second color in here, just to tone down that yellow a little bit and make it match. Go back in with my darker red and color in this little bit of, whoops, on end. A little bit of red here. I can go in and add some more shadows if I want to. starting to dry now so I can kind of layer over it a little bit. Now when you're all done with this, you will need to seal it because if somebody uses this as a coaster and they go to wash it with like soapy dish rag, they might lift up the ink. So I'll show you how to seal that in a minute. I'll show you what I use. Um, this looks a little harsh to me. So see, the nice thing about this is that every time you go over it with another marker, you can basically uh, resolvent the old ink and play with it some more. But as you can see, you can also do this project very quickly. Now, say for instance, you want to add 
um, some stamping in the background. If this looks a little too bare to you, you can do that. I'm just going to zap this with my heat gun for a second to dry it. I'm going to put my mask over it. And I've got this clear stamp. I think it's by my sentiments exactly. It's just a, like a French script. And the reason I'm using a clear instead of like a wood-mounted rubber stamp is that I want to see exactly where I'm stamping. And also, it has a little bit of a squish. Since I'm stamping on something really hard like a tile, I really need something that's got a good cushion on it. I'm using Stays On Jet Black. It's an alcohol-based ink pad. And I'm going to really force pressure on the stamp. So I want to make sure it makes a good contact. Oh, I'll just glue itself down there. Oh, that looks kind of cool. I'm going to just repeat it until I get over the whole tile. Stays on is not my favorite ink, but sometimes you need it. You need it for techniques like this, stamping on non-porous surfaces that you know might need to be washed. And you always want to clean your stamps immediately after finishing up with stays on ink. You could use simple green. Um, I heard that it's not good to use simple green on the clear stamp, so I uh, found a recipe online to make a stamp cleaner simply out of um, baby shampoo and glycerin and water. Just about a tablespoon of baby shampoo and a teaspoon of glycerin to about, I would say about 8 to 10 ounces of water. It makes a really great little stamp cleaner. Ah, my mask is stuck to my stamp. Sticky stuff. And get up one more time. If I wanted to color over the um, words here that I just stamped, I would need to go back and use my Xylon, my Xylene-based ink pads, because if I use my alcohol ink, it's going to take that ink right away, because this is alcohol-based. So always, um, if you don't want to smear what's underneath, use a different type of ink pad. There you go. You can add more color. When it's all done and you're perfectly happy with it, you want to seal it. And I use Krylon Triple Thick Clear Glaze. Um, triple Thick Crystal Clear. You can get it at Walmart. It's about $3 a can and it's fabulous and it can last you a long time. Just make sure you flip it upside down and spray it for a second so you can get out any, uh, any gloss that might be stuck in the nozzle.